Hey guys and welcome back to today's video with me Elsek and today we're gonna speak about a tool which is so important that I use it in each and every internal pen test. This tool is called NXE or former Crack Map Exec. Now NXE is a tool suitable for performing authentication over different set of protocols. How the tool is gonna work is that you define a protocol, you define a target, you define your credentials and it's going to try to authenticate with that. Now you may ask, all right, but that's just authentication. Why that tool is so big of a deal? Well, instead of authentication only, it can do many, many more stuff. For instance, see first how much protocols it supports. We have FTP, we have SSH, SMB, WMI, VNC, and so on and so on and so on. Keep in mind that authenticating over a bunch of protocols, for instance, VNC and MSSQL and RDP can be super slower beside SMB or WMI, but still the tool can work and still it can perform its job. Now I can do NXE minus H and see how little help menu I have. But if I do NXE SMB minus H, see how huge help menu I have, which shows what the tool is really capable of. Now to showcase how it works, I can try to perform a simple authentication. Now my environment is the following. I have a PFSense which acts as my firewall. It has uh, internal address and it has external address which effectively tries to mimic a real firewall in real engagement in, in real environment. Then I have a domain controller, I have a SQL machine 01 and a SQL machine 02 and then obviously I have my Kali Linux machine there. Now for that I can specify NXE, I want the SMB as my protocol and now I can define my target. For instance I can try 172, 6060, 024 which is going to target all of my machines inside the local network. Now here I want to specify my user which is Jay Smith. Then I want to specify my password, which in that case is my secret pass one, and then the domain is lsec.local. When I run that, NXE is going to take the SMB protocol, it's going to take the, all the targets inside, inside the scope, it's going to see on which targets the SMB is activated, and then it's going to try to authenticate with the user I provided over the target themselves. Now in that case, we, it can give us plenty of information. First, it can give us the domain name of the machine based on the IP address it found. Then it can give us the version of Windows it, it has identified. Then, of course, the SMB sign-in, which in that case it's false, it can be used for relay and more attacks. Also, the version of the SMB and pretty much that's the super handy information. Now with that, we can try a bunch of things. For instance, we can try to enumerate shares all the present shares for all the identified SMB servers, but keep in mind that this may vary with the different permissions you have. For instance, if you see now, my user is low privileged, and as you can see, he can only read specific shares. Now, I mean, that's not bad. We can still take a look at the shares using, for example, in packet SMB client, and take a look at what's there in potential to finding something nice. But if you have more privileged, privileged user, you may also have the ability to write to specific shares or pretty much compromise these specific machines. Now, let me showcase what happens if we query that for a more privileged user. So I can do NXE, SMB, again, the pretty much the same scope. Now, my username is going to be kl to that. The password is for the Rich King and don't blame me, I'm a huge Rich King fan. Then the domain is lsec.local and pretty much what that's gonna do is now it's gonna spray for authentication access over the same scope, but now we are admin on each machines. Effectively, k to that is domain admin, so he must have the permissions to com own the, every complete system. As you can see, that's the case. And now the output is different because we have a pwned icon there. What this icon means is that we can effectively compromise the machine, execute command from the machine, dump LSAS or some directory, and I can showcase how that how that's been done. The first thing I want to showcase is, is the differences in the shares option. When I do dash dash shares, now I can pretty much write and read to any share. So keep in mind that to specify that option for each user you compromise, you never know where, when you can find the user with more privileged access over specific machines. As you can see, now we have quite a different output. Now, as I mentioned before, NXE or CrackMap exec both are capable of executing system commands. With the, with the parameter minus X and specifying a simple command, I can effectively run any command out there. So I can pretty much use that to download files, get a beacon, 
execute PowerShell commands and so on. And the cool thing about that is see, I am operating from the standpoint of my own user. What that also shows me is that I can effectively compromise any machine if using impacted scripts. So for instance, I can try impacted SMB exec or PS exec, and then I can try the username or actually the syntax was lsec.local, k 2 zat now the IP is 172.60.60.50. When I do that, we can see that I can effectively can compromise the specific machines. Now it's a different approach. When I compromise the machines from various impacted scripts, for instance, when I do it over PS exec, I'm gonna get a system shell directly. Now, as mentioned before, NXC and crack map, crack map exec can spray over multiple set of protocols. For instance, now instead of this command, which is using SMB, I can pretty much use a different set of protocol, in that case, WMI. Now in that case, the, the output can give me pretty much the same output saying that I have admin rights over specific machines and when I'm using WMI that means that if I use impacted not PS exec but WMI exec I can again compromise the mentioned machine. Keep in mind that now we have a different context and if I do who am I we are now operating under the user itself. So in first day in first case if you use PS exec or SMB exec this attack and this tool for whatever movement is designed in such a way so it's going to give you system context where if you use wmx deck you're going to always receive the con the context of your user so that's super important to know don't misunderstand misunderstand that and pick your tools based on your environment and based on your needs if you need system use ps exec if you need a context from your user you can use wmx exec. I'm pausing the video just to say massive, massive thanks to my Patreon sponsors. You have no idea how much that means to me. If you enjoy my work and have further appreciation to it, you can also become my Patreon where you're gonna get added to my sponsors organization in GitHub with a lot of projects inside. I am sure you're gonna find it useful. Moving on. With that, I have many more things to showcase to you guys. For instance, if, I, if we go back to the SMB command, now I don't want to execute system commands, but let's say I want to dump LSAS. Now, generally, when I want to do that, I want to get a beacon from a specific machine, then I want to download Mimikatz, bypass AV and so on, and then dump LSAS. Or I can potentially also make sure to, to bypass the PPL protection. But in that case, I can directly do minus minus LSA, which is going to give me the LSA credentials for all the machines. So no matter if it's a domain, if it's a normal machine, if it has SMB and I'm admin over that SMB, the tool is going to automatically connect and automatically dump the LSA secrets, aka cached logons. That's a time saver. I have to warn you that it's not the best OPSEC things to do. And as mentioned, its only purpose is saving time. So if you are on a pen test where you don't pretty much care whether you are stealthy or not, this is pretty much the best, the best thing to have. But if you are on a pen test and you have to be stealthy, better don't do that because you're gonna get detected super easily and super fast. Based on that, we can not only with them PSA, but also SAM. LSA is database for the cache domain users where the SAM is the local database. So if I swap LSA with minus minus SAM, I can get the same database for all the machines I'm admin to. And boom, these are all the local accounts for all the machines I am admin to, which are pretty much all of them. Now with that, I want to showcase some of the modules these two supports. So if you do NXC SMB minus L, this is going to give you a list of modules for specific protocols. Keep in mind that these modules are different. So if I do NXC LDAP minus L, we can see a different set of modules. Now, some super interesting modules for LDAP are Enum Trust, R Get Network, the user descriptions, the machine account quota, which can be used for resource based constraint delegation. We can get all the users and so on and so on and so on. But now we're going to mainly focus on the SMB modules. Now the SMB modules, we have some super interesting one. One of them is the NTLM V1. This shows whether which machine actually supports this kind of authentication. And if some machine supports NTLM V1, it can be completely compromised. So for instance, I can do NC SMB and instead of that dash dash SAM, I can now do minus M and NTLM V1. This is going to scan this module against all the machines it founds. But in that case, my domain is hardened. So in theory, there, ah, 
Yeah, sorry about that. The domain is not hardened. <laughs> and as you can see, the NTLM V1 is allowed on the domain controller and on the SQL 01, which means that we can effectively compromise these machines by capturing the authentication. And first, NTLM V1 is super easy to crack. And second, it can be used for cross relay attack. Never mind, now the second module I want to showcase to you guys is the one from Crackmap exec, so we can move it there. If we do SMB minus L, exactly the same command with Crackmap exec, we can see we have a module where it was missing with NXE, and this module is called WebDAV. This module allows us to scan if specific machine has the web client service enabled, and if it has that specific service, you know what's gonna happen based on my blog, so make sure to Click the link in the description and read it. I explained how to conduct resource-based strain navigation attacks from pretty much all angles. Now what we can do is I can try SMB, specify the same host there. I can use my low privileged user, so JSMIT, my secret pass, and now the module WebDAV. When I run that, we can see that WebDAV client is enabled on my SQ01, which can effectively mean that I can compromise this, this host with the RBCD attack. Even though we showcased literally a lot of things for that tools, we barely scratched the surface out of it. So for instance, we have plenty more modules, we can attack SCCM, we can attack MSSQLs, we can spray for access, brute force, perform password spray attacks, and conduct many, many more stuff. So definitely take a look at that tool, take a look at the documentation, Take a look at all the modules and all the options it has. Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed the content, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and I'm definitely see you in the next one. Also, if you have some suggestions about how the video can become better and what you can enjoy see more, drop that thing into the comments and see you again.